Jesus wants to speak, so I'm going to speak with Jesus. Come divine, welcome, speak in my speaking. Apocaradopia. <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you? Apocaradopia. That's the Greek word for hope. It means to be filled with eager expectation, to look with an outstretched neck. Okay, like as if you're waiting for a train or a bus or looking for something or somebody, you know, and someone's standing at a garden fence and they're looking for someone to come and they're standing there with their neck outstretched. That's apocalyptopia. It's the it's the virtue of hope. Now remember, this is the virtue, a theological virtue. Faith, hope and charity. Faith, hope and love. The three theological virtues. We have to have this. It's an antidote to despair. And I meet so many people in despair. And I've battled despair, as have many over the centuries. And the battle with despair requires hope and trust. But hope is a theological virtue, right? So last week I was in Romania giving a parish retreat on the gift of living in the divine will, talking about the coming era of peace, talking about the chastisements and how these chastisements won't come near the children of the divine will talking about how everything is going to turn out for the good of those who love him and i went on and on and on and a couple of people were saying you you seem to be overly optimistic about everything and i said no i've got hope hope eager expectation john the baptist's testimony about jesus just before he starts testifying saint luke says the people were filled with expectation. I find I meet more and more people who have no expectation. They have no hope. They are hopeless. They are suffering from despair. Why is our suicide rate sky high? Because of despair. But John Paul II had a thing written on the back of the catechism, a quote from St. Peter, and I can't remember the exact quote, but always have an answer for the people who question the hope that is in you. So we should have hope in us. We should be so filled and overflowing with hope about what is coming. Let's bring Louisa in a bit more there because this is her stuff, this is her era, this is her teaching. And so it's not overly optimistic. It's just a firm hope in these times when the world is plunging into sin where we're on the verge of economic collapse, where there are earthquakes and wars and rumours of wars and viruses and so on. This is all part of the purification to prepare the world for the era of peace. Now, you children of the divine will, you know what's coming. You know we're, getting, we're coming to peace. You know we're coming to shalom. You know we're coming to beatitude on earth. You know we're coming to the possession of the divine will. You've read Louisa's diaries. You've read that message, which is overflowing with hope, where Jesus teaches us about fusing ourselves, abandoning ourselves, etc., 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 etc. There is no place for hopeless in our hearts. None. Of all the Catholics on earth, it is the children of the divine will that should be overflowing with abundant hope, recognizing that no matter what happens, Peace is coming and nothing can stop it. And if we look at the world today and we criticize it and we look at the, anything in the church, it's all heading towards the era of peace. The whole thing is geared towards the era of peace. Everything in the world today is geared towards the era of peace. So we should have firm hope firm eager expectation we should have good old-fashioned firm apocaradopia and even if we like saint paul find ourselves 24 hours from being beheaded for our faith hope should never fail us never so have hope everybody do not lose hope <laughs>